lecture on Joshua. The word for today comes from chapter 21. This chapter is about the Levites receiving towns. No land was given to them like the other tribes, but only towns. Their inheritance is God and they are to be loyal to the temple although they did not give them or he did not give them lands he gave towns and pasture lands instead in verses 1 through 2 the Levites asked for their towns please read verse 1 now the family heads of the Levites approached Eliezer the priest Joshua son of Nun and the head of other tribal families. The Levites asked Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun for towns. Eliezer was a priest, a spiritual leader, while Joshua was a political one. In verse 2, we can read that they were asking for what God promised to give them. Verse 2, At Shiloh and Canaan and said to them, The Lord commanded through Moses that you give us towns to live in with pasture lands for our livestock. Give us towns to live in with pasture lands for our livestock, they requested. They were justly asking for what God promised to give them. They were asking for what was promised to them. We should not ask according to our selfishness when we are asking for something. We need to find out where His will is then ask accordingly. God does not answer our prayers when we ask out of selfish desires. We need to remember what He told us and ask accordingly. Then He will surely grant our request. Here the Levites were not asking out of their selfish wants. They were not trying to fill up their greed. They asked what God promised to give them. God will grant our requests when we ask Him justly. In verses 3 through 7, the towns were given after Joshua casted lots. All of the portions of the land of Canaan were taken by other tribes already. This is why the Levites were given towns that are within the land of other tribes. Verse 3. So as the Lord had commanded, the Israelites gave the Levites the following towns and pasture lands out of their own inheritance. The Israelites obeyed the Lord's command very well. They gave the towns and pasture lands to the Levites out of their own inheritance. If the Israelites were selfish, they would not have gave the towns to the Levites. They let go of their selfishness to obey His command. Moreover, they love their brothers by heart. They are ready to sacrifice to obey His commands. 
we also need to get rid of our greed first if we want to share with and give to others. The reason God gave us much today is for us to give much to others. Why did God give us many grace and blessings to us again? It is not for us to fill up our greed. He gave us much so we can share much. The greedy ones cannot share what they have with others. But some at times sacrifice everything to obey His command. Our obedience to His command is not a loss because God will give us or give us more grace and blessing. This is why we need to learn to cast away our selfish desires to obey His will and to sacrifice ourselves. Next in verse 4, they cast at lots. Why? Because otherwise, people would try to grab the towns by their own greed. They cast their lots so that distribution will go according to the will of God. They cast their lots not for their greed. They did so to find out His will and obey it. They were ready to believe that the result out of the lots are His will, whether the towns are bad or not. Our God is absolutely sovereign. The result of the lots are in His hands. We need to believe that all the things are happening in our life because God allowed them to happen. He is the master of history and human life. The country we live in and the place we live are all determined by God. Therefore, the Levites were to take the results as God's will and give thanks to Him. Verses 4 through 5, the first lot came out for the descendants of Aaron. They are a family of priests. Why them first? They had the duty to offer sacrifices in the temple of God. They had special calling to prioritize God above all else and bless the people. Today we can receive blessings from God when we live a church-oriented life. All the things that we do for the Lord never go to waste. He is going to repay our devotion and sacrifice to God with the best blessing. The descendants of Aaron received the best towns. Thus, when we serve our church, and live a church-centered life,
God will meet all of our needs abundantly. The descendants of Gershon received 13 towns, as written in verse 6. Even though Gershon was the firstborn, the younger one, Kohath, received the allotment first. Why was this the case? The descendants of Kohath were faithful in serving God. It is very precious to worship God. God gave priority to those who serve Him faithfully. It is the same in our churches today. God is a God of righteousness. God lets us reap what we sow. He pays according to the work we have done. According to the degree of our loyalty. After Gershon, the descendants of Merer received the towns, just as written in verse 7. The descendants of Merer were in charge of taking care of the panels, foundations, and utensils of the temple in the wilderness. They were in charge of taking all the utensils in the temple. From verses 8 to 42, the names of 48 towns the Levites received are recorded. God allowed them 48 towns, but they did not take them for their selfish ones. Verse 8. So the Israelites allotted to the Levites these towns and their pasture lands as the Lord had commanded through Moses. They obeyed God who commanded through Moses. God appointed leaders and led the people. Then the leaders obeyed his command and distributed the towns and pasture land faithfully and accurately. Obeying the commands of Moses was the same as obeying God. The lands were clearly distributed because God is faithful. In verses 7 through 26, Kohath descendants receive the towns. All the towns and pasture lands that were given to the descendants of Kohath are recorded in verse 7 through 26. Truly God distributed in an accurate way. If the other tribes were selfish, they would not have been able to give the towns to the Levites. This is why we need to empty our greed before obeying His will. The greedy ones in the world cannot obey His will. We need to put our hope in God and live an obedient life to His commands. If, if other tribes were self-seeking, they would not have will to give the towns to the Levites when they asked for it. Everything in this world belongs to God. 
everything we entrusted to us just temporarily. This is the reason why we have to live an obedient life, following His will. Verses 27 through 33 record the names of towns and pasture lands the descendants of Gershon received. How many towns did they receive? Verse 33. The total number of towns of the Gershonite clans came to 13, together with their pasture lands. They received 13 towns. Again, they did not take it out of their selfish interest. These towns and pasture lands were allowed by God. A man cannot take everything by greed, even if he attempts to take everything. We can be blessed only when God gives us. We can take only when God allows us. And in verses 34 to 40, we can read about the towns the descendants of Merer received. Verse 34, the Merarite clans, the rest of the Levites, were given from the tribes of Zebulon, or Zebulon, Zoknim, Karta. God allowed them towns as well. They did not take it based on their greed. They took it through obedience and faith in God. How many towns are mentioned in verse 40? Verse 40, the total number of towns allotted to the Merarite clans, who were the rest of the Levites, came to 12. The Merarites received the towns according to their clans. How many towns did they take? Twelve. Once again, they did not seek out of greed in their heart for such number of towns. The just God distributed the towns the most fitting way possible. Thus the Levites took a total of 48 towns. Verse 41, the towns of the Levites in the territory held by the Israelites were 48 in all, together with their pasture lands. The Levites received 48 towns out of the inheritance of the Israelites. So we can say that 12 tribes gave 4 towns each. Verse 42, each of these towns had pasture lands surrounding it. This was true for all these towns. The Levites received a total of 48 towns and lived all across the land. Why? in order for them to serve God well and for them to handle their jobs as priests all spread out in the nation. They taught his words and took up their calling in various places. Today's church should be like the early church, people coming together and dispersed around the world. 
We should be armed with these words and prayer in our church. Then go back to our daily life to serve Him in our places. As we can see in Acts chapter 13, the church that handled the world mission was the church of Antioch. How were they able to handle that? Jerusalem church was being persecuted. It was the church disciples gathered to serve God. But they had no mind to go on missions. Therefore God disperse them through persecution. The church of Antioch is the church that was built in Syria after the dispersing of the believers. God used Antioch church more than Jerusalem for the evangelize to the world. Today, God's people need to gather and pray, learn His words, and equip ourselves spiritually. Then we should return to our daily lives and witness Him to others there. God dispersed the Levites all throughout because each had their own missions to do. God also gave the portions of the twelve tribes inheritance to them. The tribes wouldn't have given the town if they were greedy. God is the owner of everything in the universe. The towns were merely entrusted to the tribes just for temporary. Why did he do that? For them to serve the people who work in the temple of God. So it is right for the people who work in the temple to be respected and well treated. The same goes for our churches. What does the Bible say? Do not muzzle an ox that is treading out the grain. The servants of God deserve to be well respected and helped by us. The twelve tribes gave portions of the inheritance they received. to the Levites. The members of the early church were very generous to each other. We need to use the grace and blessings God gave us for the advancement of the gospel. We need not only to serve our pastors, but also sacrifice ourselves for the gospel. When the twelve tribes offered their lands, they casted lots for distribution of the towns and pasture lands. Why cast lots? To pre prevent people from being so selfish. to prevent people from taking the good ones while leaving the bad ones to others. God distributed the towns and pasture lands the best way there was. Next, God gave six 
studies of refuge to the Levites. Three were at the eastern side of the Jordan River, while the other three were at the west side of the river. Why did God make such a system? To protect people who accidentally killed other people. Jesus is our eternal city of refuge today. Jesus is our high priest. Anybody who is in Jesus receives forgiveness of sin. God also gave them 48 towns. in order for them to build houses and raise livestock. The pastors are to consider the works of God more important than their worldly affairs. What does this teach us? It teaches us that those who live a church-centered life and those who are loyal to Him will receive provisions from God. God fills our needs. This is why the pastors do not need to be anxious about what to eat. But sacrifice for God's church. He will fill the needs and bless them. Next, in verses 43 to 45, God gave the land and rest to the Israelites just as He promised. 43, So the Lord gave Israel all the land that He had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possessions of it and settled there. It is written, So the Lord gave Israel all the land He had sworn to give their ancestors. And they took possessions of it and settled there. God gave them what He sworn to give them. God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We need to believe that God's words come true no matter what. Our God is a God of covenant, faithful God, and keeper of His promises. So let us firmly hold on to His words and press on with our calling. The Bible today is His promised words. The world may end, but His words of promise will never fail. It will be fulfilled. To what people will God fulfill the promises of His words? To those who trust it without any doubts and who obey it. We need to believe His words as they are. And if we believe His words, we need to obey it in our daily lives. Our obedience to His words will be our proof that our faith is alive and will show the works of our faith. There are some people today who only know 
his words. They only know without any obedience. But what God requires of us is to trust his words as they are once we received it. We can bear the fruit of his words once we trust the Bible as it is. We can say we are doing a great or good job in our spiritual life when we daily live holding to his words. We need to learn his words well and live out his words in our daily lives. He blesses those who obey his words. Abraham believed the words of his promise and obeyed it without any doubt. He then received the promise and became the father of faith. God let Jesus came through the line of Abraham. And he opened the path of salvation through Jesus. So we must believe that His promise will come true and obey them. Verses 44 to 45 The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as He had sworn to the ancestors. God gave peace in that land and blessed them as He had sworn. Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3 Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. The same goes for us if we obey His words and do everything right. He will drive out our enemies. And grant us true rest and peace as well as give us all of the blessing he promised. With this I end the 18th lecture on Joshua. Thank you.